So with the geometric sequences, we can calculate what's called the sum to infinity, which looks like this. In your formula, you want to make sure you put brackets around that bottom piece again. And we can do this in a particular case only, when it's a decreasing sequence. So we can only do it if r is less than 1 and it's a decreasing sequence. So if we look at the example, 24, 12, 6, 3, it's getting lower and smaller and smaller each time. We can calculate a sum to infinity on this particular problem. Our first thing to do would be determine a, we can see that's 24, and r, 0 0.5, again if you're not sure where that comes from, just do 12 over 24. The second term on top of the first term is a fraction. That will get you 0 0.5, so it's halving each time. Now the reason this works that we can sum to infinity if we plug it in, so let's take a look at what that sequence does over time. If I have 3 and I times it by 0.5, I get 1.5 times again by 0.5. And if we just keep going to get each new term in the sequence as it continues, what we notice is that these numbers start getting really small because each time they're only going to be half as big. Oops. Each time they're only going to be half as big as the one before. And if we keep going long enough, you're eventually going to get to a number that's very, very close to zero. So as these numbers keep going, I mean, the 20th, 30th, 40th, 50th term, it's going to be so close to zero when you're adding it on, you're really not making any difference at all. So the difference, for instance, in a sequence like this between the sum to 10 and the sum to 11 is not going to be that big. Versus an increasing sequence, the amount you're adding on each time, that new number, is always getting bigger because each next term in the sequence is bigger than the previous one. So here, because we're decreasing, we're getting smaller you're eventually going to be adding numbers that are so small they're not going to make any difference to the total at all. So the way this formula works out, again, here it's given to you, and we can only apply it when it's a decreasing sequence. So if, again, if it's an increasing sequence, you cannot use this formula for the sum to infinity. And we'll know it's problems like this when they're asking us to find a total, and they're implying, like, for all time or forever they're not giving us a uh, find the total for the 10th day or for the first 15 weeks. It's just implying the total ever. So here if we're just asked the sum to infinity, again a is equal to 48. Your r here is going to be 24 over 48. It's going to be equal to 0 0.5. So similar to what we had here, just a different number on top, sum to infinity. a is 48 divided by 1 minus 0 0.5 and you're going to get 96 as your sum. So these ones they tell you it's to infinity, not too hard to figure out there. Remember in increasing or decreasing, you're going to be adding one or subtracting one when you convert. And here they have to be decreasing because it needs to be d doing that to get a sum. So again, decreasing r is equal to 1 minus the percentage over 100. So here r is going to be equal to 0 0.85. And looking at the applications, how this looks as a word problem. Donovan currently weighs 124 kgs. His plan is to lose 6 kgs in the first month. 4.5 kgs in this next, and continue to decrease by the same ratio. So that means our R value, this is a geometric sequence each month. How much will he lose during his sixth month? So here in the sixth month, they're just looking for a particular amount. That's the sixth month. Wanting to know how much it will be, and his n is equal to 6. So Tn is equal to A times R power of n minus 1. So here we have 6 times r. Well, what's r? We've got n and t. Our first was 6. Our second was 4.5. Our third as we go on. So again, with a geometric sequence, r is going to be equal to 4.5 divided by 6. We get 0 0.75. So 0 0.75 
to the power of 6 minus 1. Here we can see he's going to lose 1.42 kgs in the sixth month. If Donovan continue to continues to lose weight by the same ratio, how much will he weigh after a long period of time? So again, a long period of time is not saying how much is he going to have lost over the first five months. We're saying how much is he going to lose like if he does this forever. And if you notice it's getting smaller each time, so eventually he's not going to be losing very much weight. He'll stabilize off. But here we know it's going to be the sum to infinity. So A is equal to um, 6. And we've got bracket 1 minus R, and the R here was a half. Oh, sorry, not a half, 0 0.75. So here we're going to get 24 kgs lost. But they want to know how much is he going to weigh, so we really have to read into that question carefully to get the next higher level step of this. He weighs 124 kgs originally, minus the 24 that he'll lose if he does this for a really long time. And he gets down to 100 kgs. So right, some people going on a weight loss program, they're not necessarily going to lose weight for their entire life. But they'll lose excess weight for a few months, maybe a year, and then eventually it kind of stabilizes off and they're just at their new weight. So that's what's happened here. He's losing a little bit each month, and each month he loses slightly less as he goes along until he stabilizes off at 100 kgs. So that's an example of what um, a sum to infinity problem would look like. Words like for a long period of time. If you look carefully down here at this next example, how tall will it be eventually, right? Eventually being again for a long period of time and that's going to be the sum to infinity that you're looking for there to apply.